we call ourselves Honey Gutin. I mean, people in Nimaya and Chilcotin. Nimai Valley is one of six Chilcotin communities, the Chilcotin Nation. We're probably the powerful nation around, in, in my opinion. Within 200 kilometers, we have everything. We have, you know, these vast rivers, big lakes. We have Choco Lake, we have Connie Lake. So we have a priceless area. Horses, you know, we call them Cayuse or you know, wild horse, whichever you want to call them. We have one of the only protected areas for horses in Canada, I believe but we have Brittany Triangle that those horses are protected for, for us to, to use. The wagon trip is one way to use them. You sit around a fire, you hear little things, a legend or a story. People say, we used to jump in wagons and go to the Williams Lake Stampede. Now it's been probably 60 years since the last wagon left Nimai, but this is our this is our 10th annual. Well, the youth wagon trip was started by myself and my wife. The whole purpose of the wagon trip is to get the youth off electronics, and the other one was to bridge that gap um, between elders and youth. Um, and then the third was, you know, we have to adapt to the modern world, and you know, wagons are not a part of our culture but we have the modern convenience of both worlds to, to make it fit, to be more effective and at the same time keep our culture alive. No gaps in between the wagons, try to keep it tight. Stay to the right hand side of the road. If your horse kicks, let people know. You know we're a long ways from the hospital. Anything we can minimize, we'll minimize. Let's roll. I think the Honey Gutin Youth Wagon Trip we really helped our youth because they see the model right in front of them. They see our elders, they see our, our adults, and kind of gives them a voice too, a voice and even empowerment. I feel really blessed to grow up in Namaya, even though it's remote and we're like three hours away from the nearest city. But 
that's what I love about it. It makes me feel connected to Mother Earth. You feel a real connection with like all the plants and wildlife and the scenery. It's like heaven on earth. You're pretty much like cut off from the world basically until you get into Williams Lake because there's no cell service. We're not allowed to have technology, but it's still fun. It's something that adults do for the youth, like, and they do it for us because like, we're the next generation. Coming from Nimai Valley, we're 200 kilometers from Williams Lake, which is our destination. Um, you know, along the way, we, we have specific campsites along the way. Um, they're roughly 30 to 50 kilometers in distance apart. Um, so that, that includes seven nights of camping. Um, you know, that's a, that's a great way to, to build your community up from day one to the last day. It's a good way to connect to the land. Horses are family, they're not just an animal to us. Let's just say you have a bad day and then like the answer is just horses. Like, horses are kind of like a healing thing, they have like something in them that just takes all that negative stuff away. Riding a horse and looking at mountains, that's kind of like therapy right there. I feel independent looking after my horse. Like, I've had him for 13 years now. He's helped me a lot with grief and depression and like staying away from drugs and alcohol. Just the connection and bond we have. At home, we have a lot of alcohol going around and it's good for them to get away from everything and to teach them not to go down that path. You're outdoors, and for me, I like to be in the nature. At home, I'm outside a lot, and I 
it's just fun being out here and with the horses. I've always had a thing with horses. I love horses. They're fun. When we get here, we take the saddles off just so they could cool off. You watch our, our youth wagon trip on day one and you compare it to, to our last day, we're, we're in sync, we're, we're all connected. You know, when, we're, when we're on the land and we're, we're doing one, one thing, one goal, whether that's fishing or hunting, that's where you build your community and you find your little, they call them subsystems, each person has a job and each person knows that job and each one of them does it really well. We involve everyone in, in the area. If they want to come, they can come. We had that door open and they took it up. Hardly any First Nations communities have done that. They open up that door and say, you know, we are here, both sides, but we have to work together. Our community had to start somewhere to be healthy, and this is one, one step. You know, we looked at our history, we looked at what people have always said around the campfire, and one of the things that we followed is, you know, our ancestors did this. You know, we're gonna follow their steps, but at the same time, we're gonna create our own. With us doing that, you know, we've created a really strong community. You know, we hear, different drum songs coming back. We hear different stories coming back because when you're on the land, that's where the stories are. One year ago, we had a wagon go off here at Naguantlet, Feral Canyon, probably about a 20, 20, 30 foot embankment. A matter of two or three seconds, you know, it went straight off the embankment just like a, a car would do an endo. Um, but with horses and a wagon, you know, I was watching it as it went over to watch six of our elders go over. It's like watching a, a movie, but it's real life happening right in front of you. Down at the bottom there is where the two team horses, um, their legs were intertwined. Um, one was upside down, one was facing up and then the, the wagon was sitting upside down on top of it and all the harness and stuff was holding them down. Even though they were kicking and whatever, they, they couldn't really move. One team horse, we had to put it down and one survived and survived a year later. 
and then the rest of our elders were from this big tree right here from here on down and to the left kind of scattered here and there and we had two different teams one was a first aid team dealing with our elders and one other team was dealing with the horses the community shows its strength when tragedy strikes you know you, you see uh, support systems you see you see who's there behind you when you when time is needed in our community you know to me past was flying colors Steal from the person who has lots. Yeah. 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 And we're going to have everybody here watching, making sure you guys have double. The land-based healing for the youth kind of changes you, teaches you a lot of things that you can't learn in school. It's incredible. It's like a dream come true. I'm happy I'm from there. There's a lot of mountains. That's what I mostly love about my is the mountains. go on top of a mountain and feel like you're on top of the world. You're a new person when you get off the wagon trip. You can go on the wagon trip with no friends at all, then the first day on the wagon trip, everybody would be your friend. What I see in it, the future of the wagon trip is like more youth going. It's a great experience out here with everyone and that there's no worries out here. And it's just a happy place. It's just not me. I'm mean, just a small person amongst the whole community, and I think that's probably the biggest thing. Within the 10 years, we've created the family. That family makes this trip run. Today is our last day for the wagon trip, and tonight we'll be arriving in town for our grand entry. You know, you want to talk about building self-esteem. This is a this is a really good way. I think they're just they're really excited. You know, they 
the energy is really high even though they're tired. You know, I, I can't really explain it, you know, it's just a, just a big excitement. I think it's the youth wagon trip is one successful trip of many that's soon to come. We are Hanigutin, and we continue the journey our ancestors began. <laughs> 